0.05 subject code. Uh, in this, I am going to handle unit 3 and unit 4. Already unit 1 and 2 handled by Animam. Today, I am going to discuss unit 3 and unit 4. Right? Unit 3 have a transformer and unit 4 a three phase induction motor and single phase induction motor. So, these are the two unit I am going to discuss now and then if time permit, I will discuss the previous year question paper. Okay. Am I audible? Next. So, first uh, unit 3 is a transformer, it is a single phase transformer. A transformer, it is a single phase transformer. Transformer is a static device which transfers electrical energy from one electrical circuit to the another electrical circuit, right? So, transformer is a static device, nothing but it never rotate. For example, previous first second unit you discussed DC machines. In this DC motor and DC generator, we have discussed these machines and all rotating machines have a rotating part. But a transformer, it does not have a rotating part. Okay. So, due to this, the losses of the transformer is less. So, efficiency of the machine will be higher. Right. So, a transformer is a static uh, machine which transfers electric power from one circuit. Here, one circuit is nothing but primary winding and another circuit is nothing but secondary winding. So, it transfers the electrical power from primary winding to secondary winding. Okay and the range is, ranges of the voltage and current will get vary from primary winding to secondary winding. So, uh, voltage and current rating of the primary winding is different than secondary winding. Okay? And, but the frequency in primary winding and secondary winding both are is equal. Right? So, frequency is same for the primary winding as well as the secondary winding. But voltage and current make it vary in primary winding as well as the secondary winding. So basically, transformer is an electromagnetic energy conversion device, right? So mainly the transformer is used in electric power system and distribution system. These are the system it is mainly used. Next, we will discuss about the construction of the transformer. So this is what a constructional diagram of the transformer you can see, right? So the rectangular or square shaped is nothing but your core. There is the main two parts are available in transformer core and winding okay so this rectangular portion this uh, sorry, triangle sorry uh, square portion is nothing but a core in this core this is nothing but a core actually uh, this shape it may be square shape or rectangular shape it may be but here it's a square shape actually it may be rectangular shape as well as a square shape right so uh, the core <coughs> core when the core it provides the magnetic flux path it provides the magnetic flux path right in core there will be a two parts are there one is nothing but uh, yoke and limb yoke is nothing but this horizontal portion this is nothing but yoke and limb is nothing but vertical portion of the core is nothing but limb okay so in the limb only the coils are wounded on that coils are wounding only the limb so you can see here this is you can see the primary winding it is wounded on the uh, left side of the your uh, core uh, left side vertical portion and right side vertical portion you can see the coils are wounded this is nothing but secondary winding okay so core is nothing but square or rectangular shape it is provide mechanical sorry magnetic flux path for the flux lines okay and then you have two parts one is nothing but yoke the other one is in limb uh, in yoke is nothing but horizontal portion is a yoke and vertical portion is nothing but a limb in the limb only coils are wounded on that okay next so, there will be a two windings are there. One is primary winding and the other one is secondary. What do you mean by primary winding? Primary winding is where source is connected is nothing but primary winding. Where load is connected is nothing but secondary winding. You can see here, this is I am saying this is not a primary winding. How can I say 
the primary winding is connected to the source input source so there will be a v voltage is connected v is equal to vm sin omega t sin is all voltage ac voltage is connected to the primary winding so it is by winding so it is called as primary winding the secondary winding is nothing but there where you going to connect a load is nothing but secondary winding do you understand that what do you mean by primary winding and secondary winding okay other than this you have high voltage winding and low voltage winding two types are there high voltage winding hv winding or lv winding so, okay hv winding is nothing but you can see high voltage voltage number of turns will be higher output voltage of this winding is higher low voltage is nothing but number of turns it will be lesser output voltage also lesser but okay other than this there will be a two types of winding low voltage low voltage winding and high voltage winding there will be a two types of windings are available here right Next is principal operation. Right. So uh, principal operation is working, and the principal are uh, mutually coupled coil. Right. Mutually coupled coil. Mutual induction principle. It is working. See, when I give AC supply to the primary winding of the transformer, so this is what a primary winding of the transformer. Here AC supply is connected. When AC supply is connected to the primary winding of the transformer, there will be a a uh, rate of change of flux will be there because AC voltage is nothing but varying, varying flux is a varying current. So varying flux has been created. And due to the varying flux of this, there will be a rate of change of flux will be there. And uh, due to that, EMF will be induced in primary winding E1. EMF will be induced in primary winding E1, right? So uh, this induced EMF is called as self-induced EMF. There will be a two types of induced EMF. I'll be discussion statically induced EMF in first unit magnetic circuit. Statically induced EMF and dynamically induced EMF. Right here, statically in the transformer is possible only for statically induced EMF. In statically induced EMF, there will be self-induced EMF and mutually induced EMF. There will be two types of induced EMF. The tunnel we have discussed in unit one itself. Right. So I am giving a varying current, AC current to the primary winding. Due to the varying current, there will be a rate of change of flux in buildings with the coil one primary winding. So EMF will be induced in the E1 primary winding. This induced EMF is called as self-induced EMF. Okay, and then there will be a, some part of the flux here. Say this is the flux which is produced in the core is nothing but phi. This some part of the flux which links with the secondary winding. Okay, so secondary winding have a turns of n two turns are here number of turns. Okay, so some part of the flux will be links with the secondary winding also. So due to the uh, links with the flux uh, second rewinding, there will be induced EMF E2 will produce in the second rewinding. This E2 is called as mutually induced EMF. So this machine is best example, so transformer is the best example for self-induced EMF and mutually induced EMF. There will be two induced EMF is best example. So that, so EMF E1 is induced here and E2 is induced here. E1 is nothing but primary induced EMF E1 and E2 is nothing but secondary induced EMF, right? There will be two types of induced EMF is there. Primary winding have E1 induced EMF, E2 is nothing but secondary winding induced EMF, right? So this is what a principle in the transformer it is what we work in, right?
one second start with one second wait Sorry for the disturbance, students. So this is what a construction detail that we discussed just now. Uh, there will be a core and binding, okay? That you discuss and ready, right? And then uh, uh, principal operation will be discussed. Next, types of the transformer. There will be two types of transformers are available. One is nothing but core type transformer, the other one is shell type transformer. One by one we will discuss now. What do you mean by core type transformer? You can see here in the diagram, the windings are surround the core. So core is inside, windings outside. You can see the diagram. This is winding. This is your core, right? So winding surrounds the core. You can see winding surrounds the core is nothing but core type transformer. Okay. So winding surrounds the core is nothing but core type transformer. This transformer actually, there will be a winding, uh, winding cylindrical type or concentrated pipe windings are mounted on that. Okay. Cylindrical type winding or concentrated type windings are mounted in this. Okay. And then low voltage winding i would already you have discussed about this actually low voltage winding and high voltage winding so low voltage windings are placed in near the core so this is your core actually near the core we will be winding low voltage winding then we have a insulation low voltage winding insulation and high voltage winding insulation then high voltage windings are wounded okay so this is the way the coils are wounded on that okay so uh, low voltage winding is uh, placed uh, that is winded in the near by the core and then uh, insulation then high voltage windings are wounded this is nothing but core uh, core type of transformers are wounded on that okay and then main advantage of using this type of transformer actually the coils are easily taken for the repair work so coils are outside only core only inside so very easy to do a repair work this is what a main advantage is we are going for a quarter transformer okay. and then uh, <coughs> there will be a shell type transformer so shell type transformer is nothing but uh, it's like a vice versa actually so uh, winding surrounds the core there will be a winding which surrounds the core is nothing but uh, shell type transformer for this kind of transformer normally we will be using sandwich type winding what do you mean by sandwich you know that what do you mean by sandwich there will be a layers are there low voltage winding and then high voltage winding low voltage winding high voltage winding like this the windings are mounted this is nothing but shell type transformer for a shell type transformer windings are inside core or outside so doing a repair work somewhat difficult for this one for this okay normally the core type transformer high high rating machines are core type transformer normally used for a lower rating we will be using for shell type transformer in our laboratory electrical machines laboratory we are using shell type transformer only but higher rating machine we are going for core type transformer okay so uh, two more questions they will ask uh, dif uh, difference La core type transformer and shell type transformer so you know that core type transformer is winding surround support shell type so uh, core surround surround and it is used to power a lower rating which one a cell type core type transformer used for a higher rating okay and then uh, repair work is easy for core type transformer for a cell type transformer repair work is somewhat difficult because it is the windings are inside the core okay next next topic is nothing but emf equation right so this is very very important topic six or eight mark question they will be asking this question actually emf equation how much of the emf will be induced in primary winding as well as the secondary winding okay so when the sinusoidal voltage is applied to the primary winding primary winding there will be sinusoidal voltage is applied to the primary winding there will be alternating that you discussed in the principle of operation itself there will be alternating plus phi is set up in the core actually okay so here due to this core there will be emf is induced in the primary winding as well as the secondary winding okay so due to the varying rate of change of flux emf e1 is induced in primary winding uh, emf e2 is induced in secondary winding okay so 
this emf induced em how much emf is induced that i am going to derive now okay that is called emf equation of the transformer you can see this is what a flux of your flux which is produced in the uh, not core actually okay so there is a, it is a varying current is uh, given to the primary winding of the transformer that will be a sinusoidal signal so it is varying from at zero the instant zero voltage is magnitude at 90 degree you have a plus 5 ohms maximum value positive value of getting then 180 degree zero magnitude value and then 270 degree there will be a negative maximum value and 360 degree again zero it's continuous actually it's a varying quantity flux is uh, produced in the core actually okay so and uh, with the help of the uh, flux rate of change of flux will be available that you understand from this Where flux is varying one with respect to the time okay due to the varying flux i need to find out the emf induced okay So this induced EMF I can calculate with the help of the only quarter cycle I need to calculate from the initial value rate of change of flux I want to find out to find out that what I am doing here a uh, initial value and final value I am taking here initial value I am going to take zero the instead as the initial value at zero time period I am getting the flux value is zero and uh, quarter cycle I am going to take this is the quarter cycle that is nothing but at 90 degree at 90 degree I am going to get a value of the plus 5m value so these two initial two values with the help of the two value I am going to find out the rate of change of flux so rate of change of flux is nothing but t by by tt okay rate of change of flux n I am going to take as a single term coil n is equal to 1 when n is equal to 1 e is equal to n into t by by tt n is equal to 1 so e is equal to t by by tt so I can check the rate of change of flux is nothing but uh, 4 f pi m I will get induced average value of the induced emf for turn for a single turn I will get 4 f pi m this is nothing but average value but this is uh, here is nothing but your RMS value AC is nothing but an RMS value so for an RMS value we need to find out sinusoidal signal with the help of the form factor form factor is nothing but 1.11 yeah, form factor is nothing but RMS value by average value that and all we have discussed in that electric circuit paper itself right so RMS form factor is equal to 1.11 for a sinusoidal signal it is equal to RMS by average value I have now average value if I multiply with 1.11 so that I will get 4.44 F5 this is what a uh, RMS value of induced EMF for a single turn if I calculate but I want if the number of turns will be n1 in primary winding so that induced EMF in primary RMS value e1 is equal to 4.44 F pi m n1 I get understand and similar way for if I want to get a secondary winding secondary winding induced EMF you want to find out so I need to multiply n2 why I want to multiply n2 n2 is nothing but number of turns in secondary so 4.44 f pi m n2 so it is nothing but rms value of induced emf in secondary winding similar way for a primary winding uh, induced rms value of induced emf e1 is equal to 4.44 f pi m n1 so, so this is what rms value of the induced emf in the uh, transformer this is very important question emf equation of the transformer people will be asked the question is not then repeatedly asking this okay. and then Next important topic is nothing but equivalent circuit of the transformer. Okay. So what do you mean by why why you want to find out the equivalent circuit? Why, why it's need actually? See any physical equipment or model, it should be converted into equivalent circuit actually. Why you want to do this? To analyze the performance of the circuit or improve the performance of that in any machine or model, we want a equivalent circuit. Okay. So we need to find out the analysis of the machine. Why you want to do an analysis of the machine to improve the performance? What are the kinds of parameters will be here? Actually, here regulation is the main parameter. So, regulation to improve the performance of the machine or power factor or maybe are reducing the resistance value and reactance value. So, to improve the performance of the machine, we are going for an equivalent circuit of the transformer. Okay? So, in this equivalent circuit, this is simplified simplified equivalent circuit actually which is drawn in a transformer actually. See here, so what are the parameters are here? V1 is nothing but here, this is what a V1. This V1 is nothing but uh, primary which is voltage which is applied to the primary winding okay and uh, 
R1 is nothing but resistance of the primary binding. X1 is nothing but a reactance, inductive reactance of the primary binding. Okay. And then induced EM up in primary, I can call it as E1. Right. And the other parameters, these are the parameters are nothing but no load parameter actually. Uh, regarding this, you can discuss in the phasor diagram. When well, you study in phasor diagram the transformer, you need to understand this uh, parameter actually. Here you have uh, two parameters are namely it is called it as uh, core loss component and magnetizing loss component. Here R0 is nothing but core loss component. X0 is nothing but magnetizing loss component. Okay. And IW is nothing but core loss current im is nothing but magnetizing loss current okay so these are the parameters are no load parameter okay this no load parameter will be included in the primary binding in the uh, equivalent circuit of the primary binding okay so from this you can see r1 is nothing but primary resistance x1 is nothing but primary reactance v1 is the applied voltage in the primary and e1 is the induced voltage in the primary Okay. And then other parameter, no load parameter. No, I know a no load current I naught is equal to I W plus I mu. I W is nothing but core loss current. I mu is nothing but magnetizing loss current. Okay. In parameter R naught is nothing but core loss component. X naught is nothing but a magnetizing loss component. These are all nothing but primary side. Well, coming to the second side, you can see this E2 is nothing but secondary side voltage E2. This is also induced. This is a part of the plus which links to the second winding. This voltage is induced. Okay, the E2 induced voltage. And R2 is nothing but your uh, second winding resistance. And X2 is nothing but second winding reactance. And here there will be a load is connected. So where the load is connected is nothing but our second winding that we discussed earlier itself. So V2 is nothing but load voltage. Okay, E2 is different. E V2 is different. Here there will be a, um, a four parameter in the memory. V1 E1, V2, E2, right? So V1 is the applied voltage of the primary and E1 is nothing but your induced voltage of the primary winding and E2 is nothing but induced voltage of the secondary and V2 is nothing but low voltage. Okay. So these are the parameters you should not get confused. Clearly you should memory at that. Okay. So this is what actual equivalent circuit of the transformer what we have drawn actually. Hmm. So, but when you look this, the transformer, you can see it's a complex circuit. To analyze the circuit or symbol, analyze the circuit, we need to get some simplified circuit. To make simplified the circuit, I need to bring, please all of you fill up the feedback. Let's start. analyze this circuit this looks like some complex circuit. Uh, to analyze this circuit I need to have a simple circuit to make this circuit to be a simple I need to bring all the parameter to the one side any one of the side 
there will be a two sides are here one is here this side is nothing but primary side and this side is nothing but secondary side so i need to bring all the parameter to any one side primary side or maybe a secondary side i need to bring okay so to bring this primary side or secondary side i need to transfer the parameter so how to transfer the parameter for an example see equal and circle when all the quantities are transferred to the primary side. Now I want to transfer the all the parameter to the primary side. You can see the diagram here. You can see R1, X1, no load parameter and the R2 dash, X2 dash. So all the parameter which are available in secondary side are brought into primary side. Okay. So it is called it as referred to the primary side actually. So the following parameters of the values, the resistance and reactance and load, everything I transfer to the primary side. How to transfer? With the help of the transformation ratio. So you have studied transformation, see K is equal to E2 by E1, V2 by V1, N2 by N1, R I1 by I2. This is nothing but two more percent of the transformation. What is the transformation ratio of the transformer? K is equal to E2 by E1 is equal to V2 by V1 is equal to N2 by N1 is equal to I1 by I2. This is nothing but transformation ratio. This can be obtained from the EM equation of the transformer. Okay. So E2 by E1 if you write, we will get that N2 by N1. Right. So other terms are uh, cancel each other. So automatically. So E2 by E1 is equal to N2 by N1 is equal to I1 by I2 is equal to transformation ratio. Okay. With the help of the transformation ratio, I can transfer the parameter that is secondary parameter R2, X2 and O2. We can transfer to the secondary side to primary side. So, so I have transferred here R2 dash. So R2 dash is nothing but R2 by K square. K is nothing but transmission ratio. So uh, what do you mean by R2 dash? Secondary binding resistance referred to primary. Okay. So X2 dash is nothing but secondary winding reactance referred to primary. Okay. So, so this is all every parameter which is referred to the primary side I brought. While you bring, I'll get this R2 dash and X2 dash and V2 dash I can bring. So from still I can simplify the circuit. How to simplify the circuit? All the resistance will be some, summed together. All the reactants are summed together. So you can call it as equivalent resistance or you can call it as total resistance of the transformer. R equivalent to the total resistance of the transformer is equal to R1 plus R2 dash. So R1 is nothing but primary resistance, R2 dash nothing but secondary resistance referred to primary. And equivalent reactance is equal to X1 plus X2 dash. X1 is nothing but primary reactance and X2 dash is nothing but secondary reactance referred to primary. Okay. So like this I can simplify the equivalent circuit. So equivalent circuit also very very important question. Okay. Next. Next important topic is nothing but transformer test. Okay. So why you want to perform the transformer test actually? To find the predetermined without loading a machine. That is a kind of predetermination. To predetermine the efficiency or regulation of the transformer we are conducting transformer test okay so transformer test why you are conducting first of all to, to predetermine the regulation and efficiency of the transformer we are conducting this test at the same time uh, to determine the uh, equivalent circuit values parameters what are the equivalent circuit parameters are r1 r2 x1 x2 and r0 x0 iw i mu these are the parameter also if you want to determine to draw equivalent circuit of the machine we need to perform the transformer test okay so why you want to perform the transformer test to predetermine the efficiency of the transformer or to predetermine the regulation of the transformer or to find the equivalent circuit parameters equivalent circuit parameters are R1, R2, X1, X2 and IW, IMU, R0, X0. These are the values to determine that we are performing the transformer test. Okay. There will be two types of transformer tests are available. One is nothing but open circuit test 
the other one is short circuit test okay so open circuit test on a transformer is performed to determine the no load loss the open circuit is performed to determine the no load loss no load loss loss or core loss or ion loss as we can call it as okay so basically transformer has uh, two types of losses are there one is nothing but core loss or ion loss or no load loss okay this is one type of loss the other loss is nothing but copper loss the core loss ion loss or you can no load loss this never vary it is a constant one for the machine whenever the load varies also this no load loss never vary but the copper loss it varies with the load when the load increases copper loss also increases okay so there will be two types of losses are available in the transformer one is nothing but core loss uh, and copper loss core loss is a constant loss it never vary when the load varies also but copper loss it varies with the load when the load increases copper loss also increases okay so now i want to perform the open circuit test so our open circuit test it is used to determine the core loss of the machine at the same time no load parameter i can able to find out what are the no load parameter iw im iw is nothing but core loss current im is nothing but magnetic sink loss current r not is nothing but core loss component x not is nothing but magnetic sink loss component these are the component also you can be able to find these are the components are we have used for equivalent circuit of the transformer so here so how to perform the, this test actually so this test is performed by connecting lv side is the meter so supply is connected to the lv side lv side is nothing but low voltage winding hv side is nothing but high voltage winding so low voltage winding also side we have connected source all the, all the meters but high voltage side is kept open so that is why it is called as open circuit test why it is called as open circuit set the one side of the transformer that is high voltage side of the transformer is kept open but no voltage side of the side of the transformer is connected to the source as well as the meter the source is connected with the help of the auto transformer or variable you can see the diagram here see in the diagram there will be first source is connected and it is connected to the area car output on summer then it is connected to the voltmeter wattmeter ammeter and low voltage winding are connected and hc side is kept open okay so how to perform this connection is made as per the circuit diagram after the connection is made we have to give rated voltage of the lv winding lv winding rated voltage suppose low voltage winding is rated voltage is 150 not you consider if you consider the variac is here is to bring rated voltage of the variac is very to bring a rated voltage of the uh, low voltage winding so low voltage winding if you consider 150 volt so you need to bring 150 volt here 150 volt the voltage has to be 150 volt and bring 150 volt once you bring 150 volt a respect to all the reading you have to meet okay so the voltmeter it reads the value is v1 in the diagram you see v1 and ammeter reads the value of i0 and cos pi0 so wattmeter reads the value of w0 is equal to v1 i0 cos pi0 so wattmeter it reads the value of w0 okay from this value voltmeter ammeter and wattmeter value i can able to find out the iw im r0 x0 okay so iw is nothing but uh, core loss current, IM is nothing but magnetizing loss current, R0 is nothing but magnetizing core loss uh, component and X0 is nothing but magnetizing loss current. These are the components you can be able to find out. The wattmeter value, what is the value it reads? It is nothing but core loss of the machine. Okay. From this test, I can calculate the core loss I have calculated, no load component values are I calculated. Okay. Next. short circuit test okay so the short circuit test why we are performing the short circuit test to find the copper loss of the machine as well as the other parameter r1 x1 r2 x2 this value to determine the this value we are performing the short circuit test okay so so short circuit test we are applying the 5 to 10 percentage of the rated only 5 to 10 percentage of the voltage to the high voltage winding so previous test we performed in LV side, HV side is kept open, but in short circuit test what we are doing, 
uh, HV side is you are, you are performing in the test LV side is made short circuited. So LV side I made short circuited here and HV side is connected to the meters, meters are connected here. Okay. As similar way the reverse source and the auto transformer and the meter, watt meter, volt meters are the connected here. Okay. And then how to perform this after doing the connection? So previous test that is open circuit test we kept a rated voltage of the LV winding. Okay. Rated voltage of the LV winding we have given with the help of the auto transformer. But in short circuit test we have to keep the rated current of the HV side we have to keep. See HV side is connected. So current I have to keep. What is the rated current HV side? Okay. What is the rating of the transformer if we consider so 2 kV a transformer, 115 power 230 volt is a transformer, 230 volt is a high voltage side winding. So this side I connected on the meter, is 2000 divided by 230 volt, I can get 8.66 amps, this is the current actually. So I need to keep 8.6 amps in the uh, uh, 1 meter by varying the value, slowly should vary. Why? Because in the low voltage winding is short circuited, it takes huge current to avoid that very slowly vary the auto transformer area to keep 8.6 amps when to kV transformer that is nothing but uh, short circuit test short circuit current of the high voltage side so that current we have to keep and rated other value the respect other value you have to note what do you mean by what meter reading this what you reading you have to note okay so ammeter value we call it as ISC and voltmeter value we call it as ESC and uh, watt meter value is called in WC. So watt meter reads the values nothing but copper loss of the transformer. That is what a copper loss of the transformer. So okay, from this test I can find out the this copper loss is nothing but full load copper loss. Okay. It is called as full load copper loss. I can even find out. And then I can find out the is it is a total impedance of the uh, transformer I can calculate and I can calculate the total resistance of the transformer I can calculate I can calculate the total reactance of the transformer so these are the things are I can calculate okay okay so from this you can see R equivalent resistance R E S is nothing but it's a combination of two resistors actually what we discussed previously R1 plus R2 dash it's a combination of two resistors actually similar way X E S nothing but it's a combination of two resistors reactants one is nothing but primary or secondary X1 plus X2 dash okay similar way here okay so resistance total resistance is measured here and total reactance is measured here okay so this is what uh, the important topic of the third unit transformer okay and then next we will move on to the fourth unit in fourth unit we are going to discuss the induction motor induction motor topic we are going to discuss okay. so induction motor and uh, uh, transformer you have some unique parameter it's nothing but both are working on the principle of electromagnetic induction principle it is working okay so the induction motor is nothing but you can call it as a, a short circuit secondary short circuit transformer or rotating transformer is nothing but three phase induction motor so three phase induction motor it is also called it as rotating transformer what do you mean by rotating transform transformer it never rotate but if it rotate that is nothing but induction motor okay so in the induction motor we are going to discuss a three phase induction motor and single phase induction motor there will be two types of induction motor okay see the induction motors are called it as asynchronous motor why it is called it as asynchronous motor the motor it runs below the synchronous speed are called asynchronous motor okay about the sync what is synchronous speed at and we will discuss uh, forthcoming slides okay so asynchronous motor is nothing but induction motor in the induction motor we have two types of induction motor uh, three phase induction motor and single phase induction motor these are the two types of induction motors are available okay first we will discuss what do you mean by electric motor electric motor already we discussed in unit two itself electromechanical device which it converts electric energy into mechanical energy it is nothing but electric motor in uh, a ac operation you can call it as three phase if ac supply is given to input then it is nothing but three phase induction motor so uh, this motor is a self starting motor there is no need of external uh, any means okay external force is no need to start the machine only the supply voltage will be keep so that it starts so this machine is nothing but self starting machine okay and then in the three phase induction motor in construction first we discuss 
In the construction of three phase induction motor, it has two parts mainly stator and rotor. Stator, what do you mean by stator? Stator is nothing but stationary part of the machine, and rotor is nothing but rotating part of the machine. Okay, so there will be a two parts stator and rotor. Okay, so in stator is made of iron wire, there will be a, a yoke, a steel material yoke, that is the first cover of the machine, it is the protective inner, inner parts of the machine, and then there will be a silicon steel laminated material which will be used for a stator actually. For laminated material, silicon steel material, why it is used? Silica, two more questions they will ask. Why you need of silicon steel material or how to reduce the kisteris losses? How to reduce the eddy current losses? Two more questions they will ask. Silicon steel material, it is used to avoid or reduce the kisteris loss of the machine. What do you mean by kisteris loss of the machine? There will be a magnetic reversal of the conductor due to this the loss is occur is nothing but crystalis losses okay magnetic reverse is nothing but then the conductor is rotating between a north pole south pole like this under the influence of the north pole south pole there will be a loss is occur in the conductor this loss is nothing but crystalis losses okay? and eddy current loss what do you mean by eddy current loss so the iron core iron core of your uh, uh, rotor there will be some iron parts will be that due to the iron parts there will be a, a varying change in flux there will be induced EMF in the iron parts of the uh, stator uh, rotor core uh, uh, this iron part is inducing the voltage and there will be a short circuit part there will be flow of current in the iron parts of the core right so this current is producing the losses this nothing but eddy current loss okay so due to the iron parts of the core the losses occur is nothing but eddy current loss okay so crystal is losses and eddy current losses crystal losses is reduced with the help of the uh, silicon steel material eddy current losses reduced with the help of the uh, laminated construction okay and uh, stamping will be provided in the machine itself in the stamping there will be a slots are provided inside the slots we are keeping the conductor so the conductors are connected in such a way that there will be a three phase winding as connected three phase winding connection has been made in this okay so you can now you can see the uh, construction diagram here see here here you can there will be a stator iron core right and then uh, slots stator slots are there in the stator slots only we are keeping the conductor then there will be air gap between that uh, stator and rotor and there will be a stator uh, slots are there in rotor rotor slots are there in the rotor slots we are keeping the rotor conductor and then there will be inner uh, circle is nothing but your uh, shaft of the machine okay so the practical view also I shown here, a cross action view also I shown here, okay, this is what a construction, right, and the rotor construction of the machine uh, and slots, you can see the slots are equally spaced, slots are there, okay, number of poles is based on the, what is the speed you want to achieve n is equal to 120 f by b if the number of poles are lesser speed will be higher number of poles are higher speed will be lesser okay so this is what i told you what do you mean by synchronous speed n is equal to 120 f by t two more questions i have asked what do you mean by synchronous speed okay so n is equal to 120 f by b is nothing but also synchronous speed so the synchronous speed is nothing but it is nothing but the speed of the uh, revolving flux it is available in the stator so you need to remember that stator is not rotating stator flux is rotating so how the stator flux is rotating here it is based on the, uh, the three phase ac supply is given to the stator when three phase stator winding there when three phase supply is given uh, it produces the uh, rotating magnetic field a revolving flux it generates a revolving flux okay so this is nothing but it rotating a speed of single speed ns okay so revolving rotating magnetic field RMF or revolving plus is rotating a speed of synchronous speed. The synchronous speed it is depends on the frequency and number of poles. If the number of poles is lesser, speed will be higher. If the number of poles is higher, speed will be lesser. Okay, and then supply frequency. The supply frequency also it depends on the NS value. Okay, so NS is nothing but it is not a rotor speed. It is on stator flux speed. So stator flux is rotating. Okay this rotating flux is nothing but rotating magnetic field it has a constant magnitude and rotating a speed of single speed okay so three phase supply when you give into the stator of three phase induction motor rmf is generated it is rotating in the stator okay flux is rotating stator is not rotating 
So this revolving magnetic flux induces an EMF in rotor. So this flux is, it is a rotating flux. Uh, in rotor, the arch stationary, the machine is not started, uh, conductor are stationary. So this revolving flux, it cuts the stator, uh, rotor conductor. So rotor conductor got an induced EMF. So rotor having induced EMF, it is based on the revolving flux. Okay? So this revolving flux inducing EMF in rotor conductors. So now, the rotor construction we will discuss. There will be two types of rotors are normally available in three phase induction motor. One is nothing but squirrel gauge type induction motor and slip ring induction motor. Normally, 90% of the induction motor is based on the squirrel gauge motor. Why? Because the squirrel gauge motor, the construction very very simple one, very low cost machine. Okay, size also less. As due to this, 90% of the induction motor is called squirrel gauge type. Okay. So, in the rotor construction of this voltage type, there will be a, there will be a slots are there as we discussed in stator itself. But inside the slot, we are keeping aluminum copper bar, not conductor. We are keeping aluminum copper bars are there. Okay. Uh, this aluminum copper bar, both the ends of the aluminum copper bars are short circuited with the help of the end rings. With the help of the end rings, it is short circuited. Okay. So, this construction is, looks like squirrel gauge. So, it is called a squirrel gauge type rotor. Okay. Why it is called squirrel gauge type rotor? In the slots, we are keeping the conductor. So, instead of the conductor, here we are keeping aluminum copper bar. Okay. So, both the ends of the aluminum copper bars are short circuited with the end of the end rings. Okay. So, this construction, it looks like squirrel gauge. So, it is squirrel gauge type rotor. But uh, main disadvantage of using this machine, uh, it is not possible to add any external resistance. The torque of the machine will be, starting torque of the machine is somewhat low when compared to the next type, so slip ring type motor. So, uh, this machine, starting torque value is somewhat low. To improve the starting torque, we need to give external resistance in the rotor circuit. But that is not possible in school gauge motor but it is possible only slip ring induction motor. That is the main disadvantage using this machine. Starting torque is low. To improve the starting torque, we need to connect the external resistance to the rotor circuit, but it is not possible here. But it is possible in slip ring induction motor. That is next type of induction motor. Okay. So now we can see the uh, view, construction view of the soil gauge motor. As we discussed, there will be a aluminum copper bars are there, end rings are provided, because both the ends of the aluminum copper bars are short circuited with the end ring. It looks like squirrel gauge. Okay, we will call squirrel gauge machine. Next, slip ring induction motor. This type of rotor is provided with the three phase winding one side. The other side is external resistance may be connected. So, this machine is where you want a high starting torque. That application you can go for a slip ring induction motor. Okay, slip ring induction motor, external resistance can, can be able to add it. So, due to this external resistance, this machine is used for where you want high starting torque. This machine is used. Okay, you can see the diagram here. This is construction diagram as well as physical beam as I shown here. Okay, three, three phase windings are there. Uh, here we have a one conductor only, not aluminum copper bar, as like previous case. Okay, conductor three phase windings are there. The windings are connected to the slip ring, connected to the slip ring, and slip rings are connected to the carbon brushes, and then it is connected to the external resistance. To external resistance, it is connected. Okay, so this is our slip ring induction motor. Next, we move on to working. So. How it working principle? The working principle is electromagnetic induction principle. How it works? When three phase AC supply is given to the stator winding of the induction motor, there will be a rotating magnetic field is created. When the rotating magnetic field is created, this rotating flux, it, uh, it induces the voltage in the rotor conductor, stationary rotor conductor. So this induced EMF flowing, uh, allow the current to flow in the rotor circuit. There will be an interaction between the stator flux and rotor current there will be induced EMF will be as there is stator flux and rotor current. There will be interaction between the stator flux and rotor current. Uh, the star uh, force may be created in the machine. The machine start rotated. Okay. So 
when our current carrying conductor it placed at a magnetic field it experiences force that is what it so current carrying conductor is nothing but armature that is a rotor conductor it is placed in stator flux so automatically the rotor start to rotate okay this way also you can explain the principle okay? current carrying conductor it placed at a magnetic field it experiences force so the rotor will start to rotate okay here they will ask construction working of the machine at the same time the comparison between the spool gauge type machine and slipping type induction what are these questions also they will be asking right so spool gauge type it looks like spool gauge copper aluminum bars are there their windings are there the conductors are there external resistance cannot be connected slipping it can be connected to the external resistance okay uh, starting torque will be low in spool gauge here will be medium or high you can see okay it is based on the resistance which is connected in the aircraft okay next step topic is nothing but uh, torque slip this is very very important question this torque slip characteristics okay so the torque slip characteristics of this one can be divided in three region of operation it can be divided into three region of operation one is nothing but when uh, s is equal to zero when s is low when s is high based on that it can be divided actually okay so when s is equal to zero you can see the torque equation again that below i have written here torque is equal torque is equal to 3 e to s into e to square r2 by r2 square plus s into x to the whole square into k k is a constant value actually so in this equation at s is equal to zero you substitute okay torque also will go to zero automatically so this is what a first reason i want to say here torque is zero when s is zero torque also zero but at R is equal to zero, S is equal to zero, N is equal to N S. Rotor speed is equal to synchronous speed. It rotate when it S is equal to zero in this case. Okay, and then I am increasing the slip value slowly. Low slip region. The region is nothing but low slip region. I have shown in the diagram. It's a stable region of operation or low slip region. In this low slip region, slip value is very very low. If you conclude, if you substitute low low value of the slip, S and X two value is very very smaller value. You can neglect that value. So we, when you simplify the torque equation, I'll get torque is equal to torque is proportional to S. I'll get low slip region. Okay. When torque is proportional to S, I will get linear region of operation or stable region of operation. I'll get. Okay. So linear region of operation, I'll get this operation. Linear region of operation, I'll get. Okay. Till S is equal to S M value. What do you mean by S M? S M is nothing but maximum slip. Why you want to say it is a maximum slip? Where the torque is reaching maximum value, that particular slip value is called as maximum slip. So S M is equal to after deriving this, I'll get S M is equal to X two S two by R two. S M value. So S M is nothing but where the torque is reaching maximum value, that particular slip value is nothing but S M value. Okay, and then. High slip, unstable. This is called as unstable region. When slip value is higher, so S and S2 whole square value very higher compared to the R2 square. So R2 square can be eliminated. Now I'll get high or high slip region. Torque is put in more slip proportional to S. I'll get. Okay. So torque is proportional to one by S. I'll get. So when I use this, I'll get a total hyperbolic I'll get. This curve I'll get. Okay. So this torque slip process very important. This is just a diagram and expense in that way. Okay, you may know see eight mark or twelve mark question that I repeatedly ask in this question. Next starting method. This is the last topic of this two unit. What are the starting methods? Sir? Why you want to start? So why you want to start us actually? At starting when you apply rated voltage to the machine, a very huge current flows to the machine. To limit this uh, starting current, huge current, we are going for a start us actually. For a DC motor, we are using us. Uh, 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 external resistance. See, the resistance will be connected in series, so uh, avoiding the uh, starting current. But in AC motor, that is induction motor, what we are doing here, we are uh, applying the reduced voltage. Initially, applying reduced voltage to reduce the starting current. This is the concept behind the starter of the induction induction motor. But in the case of DC motor, uh, starting current is avoided or reduced by connecting the resistance in series with the armature, like this. Uh, we are reducing the starting current in DC motor. Okay, so many types of starters are normally available in DC induction motor. First one is nothing but DY starter. What is DY starter? Direct online starter. This question very very important question. All the question paper will be asked in this kind of question. Starting with that sort of DC induction motor. DY direct online starter first time. So direct online starter. We are not going to apply reduced voltage. Full voltage we are applying. But some protective circuits are available in the starter itself. Suppose you see here, there will be a relay circuits are there, conductors are there. 
so relay circuit and contactor and uh, stop and start button will be available okay when i start the machine push, uh, press the start button so that electromagnetic coil is uh, energized the contactor it uh, move the uh, so that uh, st start starting winding of the motor will get energized so motor can start to rotate it. okay once you want to start the machine just press the start button so that the coil the relay coil get energized it uh, attract the contactor so that so you uh, start starting winding up the induction motor get energized motor gets start to rotate it. if any problem or you can call it as and the motor is uh, taking higher the rated current of the machine so thermal relay which will be available in the machine itself so it uh, deactivate the electromagnet of electromagnet of your relay circuit so contactor release the supply okay so this is what a concept actually if you want to stop the machine just press the stop button so that it so there will be a protective circuit relay and contactor circuits are available it it, uh, it won't allow to flow maximum current uh, other than the rated current but it is working uh, this kind of machine is normally used by industry for lower current rating it is used lower power rating of the machine it is applicable because it's taking uh, you are applying full voltage to the machine so it takes high current so higher rating it cannot be this starter cannot be applied only lower rating of the machine can be applied for industry most of the industry they will be using for lower rating this kind of machine the next starter is nothing but uh, resistance stator resistance you can see the diagram here First, I need to close the S, uh, switches 1, 2, 3. When I close switches 1, 2, 3, what happens? A full resistance, the boxes, rectangular boxes, nothing but a resistance which is connected here. So, more, most of the voltage is dropped in the resistance, is a very low voltage is applied to the machine. Okay? After some time, switches 4, 5, 6 is closed now. Only half of the resistance are connected, remaining half is cut out. Okay? And then, after some time, switches 7, 8, 9 is closed. Now, all the, the all the resistance are cut out the stator of the machine is connected with the full voltage there is no resistance are connected for this kind of machine very very simplest starter method actually but the problem is here a losses is more efficiency is very very poor this this starter stator resistance starter okay so uh, most of the laboratory and all they'll be using uh, education laboratory they'll be using this kind of starting method but efficiency Next, auto transformer starter. This type of uh, uh, efficiency is better, power fact somewhat poor, but it is an expensive method actually. When compared to the previous two methods, it is an expensive method actually. So, initially, you can see uh, st auto transformer is connected to the machine. So, auto, we are wearing the auto transformer to uh, apply rate at uh, very low voltage to the at the time of starting. Okay. Once motor will start to pick up the 70 to 80 percent of the speed, then the auto transformer cut out, the directly supply is connected to the stator value. So initially auto transformer is connected to give rated uh, very very low voltage at the time of start. Once motor pick up the speed, uh, and the auto transformer is cut out, that supply is directly connected to the stator winding of the machine. Okay, uh, but it is an expensive method, but efficiency is better efficiency compared to the previous R method. Power factor is somewhat reduces this screen method. The last method is nothing but star and starter. So in this method. We are using the, uh, at the time of start, star connection is used, at the time of running, delta connection is used. It is the cheapest method, normally any application is used, but drawback of using this method, only running time only delta connection may be connected, star connection cannot be connected. Star connection may be connected only at the time of starting purpose. Only. Starting purpose, star connection is connected, at the time of uh, running, delta connection is connected. See, at the question, uh, uh, question 1 you can see, this is what your uh, position 1 here. When question 1 is connected, automatically, uh, the star connection is connected, motor is running with the star connection. So, when you connect to the star connection, so question 1, star connection is connected. So, in the star connection, 1 by 2 to the time, reduced voltage is applied. Okay. So, reduced voltage is applied to the machine. So, at the time of start, the reduced voltage is applied. The current which flows to the machine also reduced. These are the methods actually. So, other than this unit, you can go through the uh, induction motor. Single phase induction motor, you can go through. Okay. Uh, so, these are the important topics of the unit 4 actually. Unit 4, what we discussed, construction principle operational induction motor and uh, torque slip characters we will discuss, starter we discussed and then uh, single phase induction work this study these are the topics that are very, very important topic for the fourth unit 
third unit already we discussed the principal operation conditional of transformer em of equation of transformer equilibrium circuit of transformer transformer test these are the topics that we have to study for the third unit these are the topics that are very very important you need to go through this okay so thank you students and thank you for listening thank you Sir?